Brahms and Mahler and Mendelssohn. Mozart, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky. Debussy. Love me some Debussy. Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms. Schubert. Uh, all men. Female composers. I, I have zero. No. I have, I've, I've got nothing. Which is sort of one who's still alive. I can't, which is terrible. It's horrible. I, I'm a singer. And as always, you have to unmute yourself. Welcome, everyone. My name is Laura Colgate, and I'm the co-founder and executive director of Boulanger Initiative, an advocacy organization for women composers based in Washington, DC. We are so happy to be talking to the Neve Trio today about their latest album, Her Voice. Before I welcome them onto the screen, I would like to tell you about one of our free services our consultation service, which is available on our website under the services tab. For anybody who is looking for any music that is written by women, um, you can go to this page, whether you're a performer or you are um, a composer yourself, or um, if you are just an educator who wants to learn more resources um, to, to share with your students, you can fill out any of the forms on our website and we will work with you and consult with you to find whatever you're looking for. We know how difficult it is sometimes to find this music and we want to try and make this work as accessible for everyone as possible. So um, check that out if you are looking for any works by women and we hope that you all find that really helpful. And now, without further ado, I will ask the Neve Trio to join me here on screen so they can introduce themselves. Hello. Hi, Laura. Well, hello, Neve Trio. <laughs> so let's start with you, Anna. Why don't you introduce yourself? Great. So I'm Anna Williams. I'm the violinist of the Neve Trio. Uh, Misha and I founded the trio, oh my gosh, 10 oh, years ago, so many years ago. Uh, but delighted to be talking with you here. This is great. Yeah, and I'm Misha Veselo, or Mikhail Veselo, whichever you prefer, and I play cello, and I'm a founding member of the new trio. Hi, my name is Eri Nakamura. I'm the pianist of the trio. Great. It's so good to be talking to you all today. And actually, I know Anna and Misha from way back when, and we have not had the chance to do any of this work together yet with works by women composers. So I'm really excited to be doing this. Us too, us too. 
So <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, so we are here talking about your latest album, which is called Her Voice. And I just, first of all, want to ask where the idea to do this came from. Yeah, well, you know, as you know, we're in a piano trio, you're so lucky to have such a huge expanse of repertoire, right? Um, and so we were very fortunate to, to make three amazing albums. Um, but we realized after making the three albums, we kind of looked at each other and had to acknowledge that there were no women voices. There were no women composers on any of the albums that we had made. And so we really felt like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is, we have to correct course. This is, this is not what we believe in. You know, we really believe that representation matters and that, you know, historically and now uh, the people who are writing music definitely include and are so fortunate to have the, the women voices that came before and are currently writing. And so we really felt strongly that we needed to, to celebrate those those voices. And uh, um, in this album, we were able to to find these real trailblazers, uh, Amy Beach, uh, Rebecca Clark, and Louise Farrank, um, and uh, and really fell in love with each piece, kind of its own gem. Uh, and some of them we really, I don't know, but speaking for myself, I really hadn't been very familiar with them, um, especially the Farrank. It was kind mm -hmm. of a find. And actually the music itself was kind of hard to find, so I'm so glad. Now we know we can reach out to you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even for preformed ensembles, this can be really helpful because a lot of people don't have the time to to spend hours and hours tracking down, you know, one score yeah. for something or even a full program or a full season of, of stuff. So I hope yeah. even the three of you find that useful. Um, I, I would be curious to know how much repertoire you had played before you started working on this album by women composers. About seven. Yep. Yeah, seven composers. Yep. We, we, we talked about it a little bit, but we asked ourselves the same question and we figured out we played only seven composers uh, who were female composers. A lot of them actually uh, alive today mm -hmm. and, and working today, which is, which is wonderful. Yeah. 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 We oh, find, we're trying to up that number. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we know that it's much harder to find these resources for historical composers. So that's that's one area that we really all have to sort of focus on and spend extra time working on. So I'm I'm thrilled that you came out with this album and I, I know it took nice. you know so much time and effort and and it's just it's a beautiful album and um, oh, we need as, as many you know recordings out there of, of these pieces as, as we can get because surely there are not enough yet. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, so um, I guess the next question I would like to ask, and maybe Misha, you can talk a little bit about the collaboration that you have with the visual component and how that got Absolutely. started. Absolutely, we have it too. Yes, we, we uh, met Ryan, who you all got, we are gonna meet in hopefully a couple of minutes. Uh, he, uh, we met him six or seven years ago and Anna actually was doing this, um, uh, work uh, in uh, San Diego, where we were in residence at the time, um, and um, it's an New State University. And um, he, uh, Ryan, he animated Chagall. He made Chagall come to life with music, and it was an absolutely incredible experience. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we talked after the show. I saw the show and I performed in it, and I was like, wouldn't it be amazing to work with Ryan? Yeah. You know, do something like this and bring music to life. And uh, since then, we've been trying to find opportunities to work together, and uh, uh, we we finally got the opportunity when it's in fact with such incredible music and um, and with uh, also uh, women artists as well, which is uh, very kind of, uh, it works well together uh, for sure. Well, and especially in, in this age of the pandemic where we're all stuck doing, you know, these virtual performances, it really, yep. <laughs> it, it gives us a, another outlet to be able to collaborate mm -hmm. and, and create new new works of art. Um, so with that, let's welcome Ryan Brady to the screen. Yay. Hi, Hi Ryan. Hello. Hi, Ryan. Good to see you all. <laughs> so Ryan, tell me sort of about the, the process of creating the visual art and how long it took and uh, where your inspiration came from. Yeah, so as uh, Misha mentioned, the first time I got connected with a new trio was in 2013. I was a student then uh, balancing a job too and doing all this different sort of stuff. So after that production, 
there really wasn't an opportunity to do anything else from there. We wanted to, but uh, we just didn't have the time. And um, Neve Trio reached out summer of 2019, uh, and it happened to be most perfect timing. Uh, I was leaving my full-time position to go freelance uh, in the freelance world. So um, they were technically my first first client and first call, uh, which is really wonderful. All right. Yay. Um, <laughs> But they reached out in uh, summer 2019 and uh, pretty much gave gave us about six months to uh, work on um, adapting these songs into a visual uh, format. So mm -hmm. it was a very uh, uh, generous amount of time, I'd say, to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Misha mentioned, one of the, uh, the aspects of this that we wanted to really highlight was to only pull from women artists, too. Mm -hmm. um, in our conversations, we'd mention the Van Goghs and Picassos and stuff, and it was it, it it would have been so easy to just rely on those artists, fall back on that. But uh, we really wanted to take the time to dive in and do our research and find uh, what I believe like we found a ton of incredible artists in this process, mm -hmm. and um, eventually, you know, it came down to what we could use for performance uh, mm -hmm. because. It's easier to pull from older artists because uh, their work is free to pull from. But um, yeah, so sure. it, yeah. Amazing. It ended up being great. Mm -hmm. So the, the first piece that we're gonna actually um, watch is Amy Beach and I wanna talk about her briefly, but I, I do wanna let everyone who is watching this know that at the very end of the live stream, we will have a, a Q and A session. So if you do have, questions, you can post them and we will get to, to those at the at the very end. Um, so uh, stick with us for the entire live stream for sure. Um, so, you know, both of both of the pieces that we're going to talk about today by Amy Beach and Rebecca Clark, we know that both of them had a lot of struggles in their lifetime, um, just being able to compose and did not, you know, have the support of their families and the people around them to, mm. to create and do um, what they wanted and and be composers. Um, but I, I wonder from the Neve Trio, what um, your experience learning this piece, um, you know, because they, women who composed during that time, had so many more obligations and mm. really weren't allowed to spend the same amount of time composing. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I, I just wonder in learning the piece, did it seem to you like it was something fully developed that she got to really spend as much time as she wanted to? And, and how did that come across to you? Hmm. That's, that's, uh, that's such a great point. And especially mm -hmm. with Beach, I think between two, uh, she was, um, uh, in fact, in the music, her, her name was uh, actually Amy Cheney, her, her maiden yeah. name. Uh, and in the music, it says, it says Amy Cheney Beach. So she, she's not even, Amy Beach is not even listed. It says her husband's name, which is kind of ridiculous. And, uh, <laughs> and she, uh, she was not allowed to perform. And she was a brilliant pianist. And in fact, mm -hmm. she, she sold the Boston Symphony Orchestra at the age of 16. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, she wasn't allowed to perform when she got married. And she wasn't allowed to get paid for commissions, I think. She would, she would compose as like a, mm. a hobby somehow. Um, but the trio, which is interesting, is, is a later opus. It's uh, Opus 151. And she she was um, already, she actually lived in New Hampshire, an artist colony at the time. And she was much more free to compose. And uh, I think mm. you can really tell uh, in the trio that she kind of goes with all the ideas. She quotes stones of her older music, uh, previous uh, pieces. She sort of repurposes uh, melodies from, uh, different pieces and some of her songs. Um, and uh, it's a short piece, but I think it has so much in it. And I think she really was mm. free to explore her uh, creativity in that piece. Amazing. Mm. Okay, so, well, with that, why don't we watch the Amy Beach? We'll be watching the entire piano trio with the visual component by Ryan Brady. So um, we'll come back <laughs> afterwards and talk a little bit um, more about Amy Beach, uh, but enjoy the piano trio by Amy Beach. Thank you.
Bravo. I just, I love how lush her writing is. And I've always been so impressed with the colors that you were mm -hmm. able to capture, Neve, oh. Trio. And oh. I just think that you, you've you captured all of that so beautifully with this piece and just the, the passion mm -hmm. and the fire behind it. It's so, so good. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Ryan, I'm curious how you decided which, um, which art to use specifically for that piece. Uh, so, uh, there's 50 works in that. We used probably about 13 in the course of it. And uh, for the first two pieces, um, new really wanted to focus on more of the uh, airy watercolor uh, techniques that she was using at the time um, versus for the third movement when she uh, uses more of her uh, line paintings on top of the watercolor. Mm -hmm. So um, I just knew we could be very like, uh, yeah, very flowy with it in the beginning and then move into these quick moving lines for the third movement. So mm -hmm. that kind of educated the choice. For mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it really fits, especially when, you know, there's all of the drama mm -hmm. that she mm -hmm. captures. It, it's really captured in the visual as well. It's, it's really amazing. So um, <laughs> the, the next piece is the Rebecca Clark trio. And I'm curious how, um, how Neve Trio discovered that? How did you come across it? Um, well, when we were working on, on the um, album concept, that was one of the pieces that we grabbed onto first, I think. It was that I think was piece. the first yeah. one. Mm -hmm. like, the Clark. Exactly. Yeah. What else can we put with the Clark? Yeah. <laughs> right. There's so much in it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that, that was well, the it's it, it, as well. I mean, in, in a similar fashion to Amy Beach, her Rebecca Clark can get very lush and yes. extremely dramatic. And I think it it yes. fits your style <laughs> of playing really well. So, I mean, it's it's a little mm. bit obvious why you chose it. Um, but I, I think it's a, <laughs> a, sort of a perfect piece for for the the three of you and and your style of playing. Um, mm. Ryan, how did who's the the artist for this next piece? Uh, yeah, uh, Libab Popova, a Russian uh, artist who is a uh, pioneer in the Cubo uh, futurism movement. Mm -hmm. So a lot of angular shapes and uh, and colors, basic uh, simple color palettes for a lot of it too. So yeah. yeah, and how did you decide to use that with the Rebecca Clark? Um, it was really all the angles and mechanical shapes of it, it felt, uh, it felt very fitting for uh, for Rebecca Clark's uh, pieces here. So there's a lot of layering we could do and energy uh, that mm -hmm. as you, you'll hear a lot of these pieces have a lot of energy behind them that the Neve Trio delivers very well. <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. And well, Ryan was so amazing. About, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to jump in. I just want to say, he, he, you know, he was such an amazing collaborator because we would sort of, not only would we share our, our you know, performance or our interpretation of it, of the piece with him, but we would also talk about what we, what we were trying to bring out in the music and what we heard and saw there. And so, you know, when we would come, whether it was the beach or the Clark, but we would come with this idea of, feel like it's really angular here. Or we feel like it's really watercolor here. And and we just were so amazed at what Ryan was able to to, to do with all that. So we were so grateful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so a, a real collaboration. You didn't just send it off and say, and here, put something with this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Right. And have you all had a, a lot of um, opportunity to perform the Rebecca Clark in person? Yes. Yeah, I don't know how many you times we really have. did it today. Yeah, <laughs> today today too. Yeah. yeah, and how is how is it generally received? I I assume that most people who hear it live haven't probably heard it mm -hmm. before when they hear it performed. So, what has your experience been? I think the most common reaction we get from people is that Clark. Yeah. What was that Clark? So I think yeah. I think people are really pretty excited about about you know her as a discovery mm -hmm. if if it is in fact the discovery their discovering of uh of rebecca clark's work and i think that trio is just such a masterwork yeah. that i i think uh i think people get get pretty excited and sort of sit up in their chair a little bit more so yeah. we've loved playing it mm -hmm. amazing 
Well, so I just want to remind everybody watching that we will have a Q&A after this piece at the very end. So stick around for that and save your questions and let us know what they are in the comments. And now we will watch Rebecca Clark's Piano Trio. <sighs>
What an ending. <laughs> it's such a stunning <laughs> piece. Yes. Yeah. Just absolutely um, incredible. And I I'm I just the courage that it took for her because she entered the piano trio into the, the Elizabeth Coolidge competition mm -hmm. in 1921. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of courage mm -hmm. to do that because two years earlier she entered the same competition with a different piece with her viola sonata. And it tied for first place with Ernest Bloch. And there was speculation from the public and from the media saying that yeah. the name Rebecca Clark had to have been a pseudonym for Bloch himself or for another <laughs> man because there was no way that a woman could have written that piece. And I, I just, I think it's incredible that she actually <laughs> had the guts to re-enter the, well, not just one more time, two more times she re-entered mm -hmm. that competition and mm -hmm. just everything that she had to to overcome with that. And I mean, it's it's kind of amazing that she never won with right. just absolutely yeah. incredible compositions. <laughs> so, talking about guts, I mean, yeah. there's so much guts in there, you know? Yeah. She's like spilling her guts in that. It's just yeah, amazing. And you you could really tell how much Debussy really influenced 
her and her, mm. her writing and, and her, her style. And um, I wonder if, especially for the piano part, how much similarity there is between the two styles for you. Well, I think Clark is even more fierce than Debussy's piano writing. It's very, sometimes monstrous and the color is just so incredible and so dramatic. But most, maybe more of um, Debussy's symphonic writing maybe is in mm -hmm. Clark's piano writing. Yeah, I was yeah. yeah, yeah, the, the colors are amazing. And mm -hmm. Ryan, the, the animation that you just somehow magically get to to go with that just it, it's so perfectly fit for you know every kind of color and emotion and um i mean it's it's so out of left field sometimes the the difference and the variety and not just not just colors but also you know her characters and um the drama mm. that she finds on every end of the spectrum and um it's just it's mm. so well paired with the visuals Great. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, well, thank all of you for, for putting all of this into the world and, um, oh. and giving us such a, a beautiful oh. recording. Um, so we're gonna take a few minutes before we wrap up to take some questions. And we have one on Facebook from um, Klaus Solomon who asked how much back and forth was there over the past six months of putting this together between Ryan and the trio. Who uh, wants to go? Well, yeah. Ryan? Uh, yeah, so I think we both can talk about it, but, but uh, both sides can talk about it. But I think we, we had quite a few um, FaceTime, whatever, Zoom calls, and we talked about different, uh, we had Ryan made this whole folder with different art, and we all looked through it, and we mm -hmm. talked about characters and music. And as Ryan mentioned before, we talked a lot about colors and textures and you know now rehearsals we're talking those terms all mm -hmm. the time um in both in fact in this case both beach and park so mm -hmm. so there was a lot of we already had a lot of sort of um ideas in mind they, they were not specific and and i think so we, we ryan sent us a lot of different options we tried different kinds of uh artists as he mentioned we, we look for a lot of different um options and i think that was just um they, they would have arrived at is we thought was the most fitting and um I do think that Ryan, you must be, you must be a musician somewhere, and yeah. there's there you, because you just so understood everything that we were, you know, attempting or striving for, and and it was really, Laura, I think you said the word magical, and it really felt like oh, this is magical. You <laughs> you find this perfect, uh, you sort of enhancement, this 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 work of art that makes us hear the music more uh, acutely and makes us see the art more uh, vividly. So it was just it was just an amazing uh, experience. I think we're all so grateful to have been able to work with you and to, and to many more. <laughs> yeah. So Ryan, you said this was your first collaboration as a freelance um, mm -hmm. artist, but had you done pairings with with audios before? Um, mostly in the um... I would do some electronic music actually with visual pairing with that. So uh, yeah. there's a lot of anticipation with the music of knowing when to take certain elements and such. So um, I was doing that in the live format, not often, but it would pop up occasionally with my old job. And then um, there are a couple, like my university didn't have a musical department. So it was mostly, mostly plays with some uh, underscoring to it. Mm -hmm. So. I would occasionally create content to accompany the underscore of the of the play. So, Amazing. yeah, there's a bit of that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You well, have the drama in there. <laughs> um, I don't see any other comments, but oh, here's one. Out of Beach's immense body of work, specifically chamber music, what drew you to this particular trio? Well, well I think as, as I said earlier, I think that she brings so much into this piece. And I mean, we also are a trio and it's the only trio that she actually got to write, um, unfortunately mm -hmm. for us. For this instrumentation, really, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good one. So so we really happy to have it. Um, but I do think it's it's so, it's such a, a great sort of um, collage almost of her ideas mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. Uh, we, I think it's very representative. It's such a mature work. Like she was like 72, right? You know, it's like yeah. mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> very yeah. cool. 
Well, and I wonder if, if for anyone watching, if there are specific trios that you really want the Neve trio to record, don't hesitate to tell them. Yes, please. <laughs> I love it. Take your requests. Yeah. All right. Pressure, pressure. <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm it, curious to know what your plans are for the, the future. Do you have any upcoming plans to record more works? We do. We do. We do. Um, uh, so the next the next uh, album repertoire is sadly not uh, comprised of women composers, but we're very eager to get back to doing another album or ten um, of women composers. Uh, the next one will be Ravel and Brahms and Rachmaninoff. So different different uh, route, but uh, we're still really the 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 love of of you know promoting women's voices, promoting voices that are uh, not heard enough, uh, something that's very near and dear to our hearts. So we hope to keep doing that more and more. Yeah, we're programming like this coming season, we're premiering piece by Yvonne mm -hmm. um for Winter Story. Uh, and then we have- um, Alexandra. Alexandra mm -hmm. Dubois, uh, who's a weird laundry school music in residence and she just joined the faculty there. So we're playing a piece of hers. And uh, we have Clara Schumann, which is probably one of the most played trios, but, yeah. mm -hmm. there, but uh, it's a really, really special one. So we love playing that. Um, and we're obviously playing her voice program quite a bit uh, this season. So uh, we, we're still exploring and, and uh, you know, we, there's so much to, to discover and, yeah. and we're really looking forward to introducing more and more of repertoire. I love Absolutely. the idea of requests. Oh my yes. God. So yeah. Much. Well, <laughs> and if you need requests, um, Boulanger Initiative is, building a massive database right now. So far we have 477 composers. It's not available to the public yet. It will be at some point in the near future. Um, but in the meantime, if you go to our website and fill out the consultation form and you can make it as specific or as general as you want, and we can send you um, a list of unrecorded pieces for Piano Trio. If you want to delve in, we will send you the links to where we'll that right away. <laughs> your scores, if they are published or if they're not, we'll tell you who to pressure <laughs> to publish them. <laughs> um, but there's a there's definitely a, a lot of work to be done, and yeah. having this recording and this album out there now definitely moves us one step closer. So, and uh, to yeah. have a this beautiful visual component with it as well. So. Thank you, Neve Trio, and thank you, Ryan, for putting this out in the world. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you so much you. Laura, thank and you. for everything you're doing. Yeah. The Boulanger Initiative is just incredible. So thank you for all you're bringing to the world. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. We have a long ways to go, but you know, mm -hmm. every day we get we get a little bit closer. So thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. Thanks for everybody who watched and joined. Um, you can always reach out if you have more questions and find us on both of our websites. Um, and thank you, Misha. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Ari. And thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks thank for joining you. us, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.